Good morning friends. Welcome to the lectures on law of torts. In this session we are going to discuss about the concept of a nuisance. Myself Dr. Deepak Miglani. It's a very important session for the students who are going for judicial services net clat LLB and LLM students. You may connect me on my WhatsApp number 0921551435. For any query you may send mail to me at my email id legalbuddy at the rate gmail.com. For regular updates of my videos, you may subscribe my YouTube channel at the rate Deepak Miglani or my website www.legalpoints.in. I expect from you to share my videos on your Facebook wall as well as with your friends so that they will also be benefited by this. Let us start with this session nuisance. Before starting with this session, first of all, we just try to understand what we are going to study in this. In this we study about what is the meaning of the term nuisance, what type of actions are covered in this topic in the concept of nuisance, right? And further we try to discuss about different kinds of nuisance. In this we discuss public nuisance, what are the actions which are taken as the nuisance in public as well as private nuisance, okay? Similarly we will also discuss about the different defenses that are generally taken when a nuisance is being created. Okay. So all these things we are going to discuss in this session. Let us start with this term that is named as nuisance, right? First of all, we have to understand what do you mean by this term nuisance, right? In general sense, we can say anything that annoys, hurts or that is offensive in public at a large that is said to be nuisance, right? The nuisance is a taken from the French word nuer, N-U-I-R-E, right? Woes means it to hurt or to annoy, right? In a case Durga Prasad versus State 1962, it was observed that nuisance ordinarily means anything which annoys, hurts or that is offensive that is said to be nuisance, right? Various authors has given different definitions, definition given by Winfield unlawful interference with a person's use or enjoyment to land or some right over in connection with it, right? Means uh, first thing is that unlawful interference, okay, of the right of a person's use or enjoyment of a land or a particular thing that is said to be nuisance as well as one definition is given by Pollock about the nuisance is wrong done by a man unlawfully disturbing him in the enjoyment of his property or in some cases in the exercise of the common right. Means in this he has covered private as well as public nuisance, right? So these are the definitions provided by the different authors Winfield and Pollock, right? General sense whether a nuisance ka matlab samjhe, in dono definitions se, as well as general meaning se samjhe, to nuisance ka matlab hai, aap ke kisi bhi cheez ke enjoyment ko, agar koi external admi unlawfully interfere kare uske andar, usse hum kya kehate hai? Nuisance kehate hai, thik hai? Jaysay, for example, you are sitting in your home, right? And what a person does, he blows a fire. Aag laga deta hai. Jisse smoke ho jata hai aur smoke aapke ghar mein aana start ho jata hai. Bhoot jata smoke ho jata hai create. Aur yeh uski daily habit ban jata hai. That's the daily habit of the person. It's a daily action of the person. So that is interference with your enjoyment of your house. So that is basically named as nuisance. This is named as private nuisance. General sense museum kya kehate hai? Private nuisance. Similarly, you are, it's your house, right? And your neighbor, what your neighbor has done, he dug a drain chair. He dug a drain chair, right? Ab aap apne ghar mein nahi ja sakte, na aa sakte. Iska kya matlab hua? Isne aapke house ke enjoyment ko interfere kiya. So that is said to be nuisance, right? So all these are the examples of the nuisance, right? So I hope, with that, you are, in a, you are in a position to understand what exactly you mean by the nuisance. All these are the definitions given by the authors. That is unlawful interference in the personal enjoyment of a person's property or use that is said to be nuisance. Nuisance is generally caused by negligence. It may be caused by the negligence, right? But it's not a branch of negligence, right? We cannot say it is not a defense that all reasonable care to prevent it have to be taken, no defense of the negligence can be taken in the in the acts of the nuisance, right? Uh, generally, nuisance is a continuing wrong. It's a continuous continuing wrong, right? It's not for a single act, right? 
it must be it must not be momentary though it would be temporary right a constant noise a constant smell a constant vibration is an example of nuisance theek hai you cannot say that you are in your home right and and a smoke was created by your neighbor for a particular day right it's not a nuisance right it is something when he repeats his activity every day right that is said to be nuisance right or we can say a momentary thing cannot be said to be a nuisance for some time right but if that is temporary in nature if that is permanent in nature that is basically taken as a nuisance right an isolated act or noise is not a nuisance it's an exception to it in the case of dolman versus hinman limited uh, in general we can say that an isolated act of hitting an isolated act of a noise or isolated act, act of hitting a, a cricket ball on the road it's not a nuisance but what happened in a case of dolman versus hinman in 1941 the defendant was held liable for the isolated act when the plaintiff slipped on a piece of fat lying outside the defendant butcher shop in nuisance and negligence right kya hua is case ke andar defendant ki ek butcher shop thi usne wahan se kuch maas ka tukda fek diya aur us maas ke tukde pe plaintiff slip kar jata hai and he was hurt right he claimed compensation in the court of law so in that case court held defendant uh, liable under nuisance as well as negligence under nuisance as well as negligence okay next we have the different kinds of nuisance uh, public nuisance or we can say common nuisance and the second one is private nuisance when we try to understand the basic difference between the public nuisance and private nuisance public nuisance is a crime under section 268 of the indian penal code right but private nuisance is not a crime it's a civil law right conceptually the difference between public nuisance and private nuisance under uh, as per to the uh, whether it's a tort or not so we can say a uh, public nuisance is also a crime but private nuisance is a tort or civil wrong let us start with the definition of the public nuisance what exactly you mean by the public nuisance right uh, public nuisance can be defined as unreasonable interference with a right common to the general public means being a general public you have been given some rights if by the acts of someone if they are interfered right so that is the case of said to be public nuisance okay it not create an civil cause of action for any person right public nuisance does not create a civil action of cause for any person right rather it goes for a criminal action okay For, uh, let's just take some example of the public uh, nuisance obstructing a public way by digging a trench right means on a road a trench has been dug it's an obstruction of the public way so that is said to be public nuisance because everyone has a right for public way everyone has a right for path right if someone uh, or if someone creates an obstruction on that that is said to be public nuisance it's a un reasonable interference with the right of common public right second one is carrying on trades causing offensive smell or intolerable noises mean in residential place if a factory have been made that causes offensive smell or intolerable noises regularly so that is a public nuisance because everyone has a right to live everyone has a right to have a amiable environment in which he can live without any noise or without any smell and if an offensive smell or offensive intolerable noises are there so all these are the examples of public nuisance okay next point is that an individual may have a private right of action in case of public nuisance in the following cases in generally uh, you have the criminal action also but uh, individual may have a private action also for that in the case of public nuisance uh, what are those cases if he is specially and particularly injured because of the injury because of that public nuisance he must show special injury as well as particular injury that he has been injured by that which is suffered by the rest of public second one is such injury must be direct and it's not a mere consequential injury right when one way is obstructed and other one is left open right it means that uh, you may also take the other way also right uh, okay third one is that injury must be shown to be of substantial character so these three are the essential requirement for which an individual can also have a private right of action against the public nuisance 
ठीक है तो क्या कहते हैं इसे क्या कह सकते हैं एक तो स्पेशल इंजुरी होनी चाहिए प्लेटिव को सेकेंड इंजुरी डायरेक्ट होनी चाहिए और थर्ड वन इज दैट इट शुड बी ऑफ सब्सटेंशियल कैरेक्टर इट शुड बी समथिंग सब्सटेंशियल राइट इन ए केस ऑफ डॉक्टर राम राज सिंह वर्सेज बाबूलाल इन नाइनटीन एटी टू वट एपेंड इन दैट केस द डिफेंडेंट इरेक्टेड ए ब्रिक ग्राइंडिंग मशीन एट ज्वाइनिंग द प्रिमाइस ऑफ ए डॉक्टर द डस्ट जनरेटेड बाय द मशीन एंटर द प्लेटिव चैम्बर एंड कोस्ट फिजिकल इनकनवीनियंस टू हिम एंड इज पेशेंट्स इट वॉज हेल्थ दैट स्पेशल डैमेज टू द प्लेटिव हैज बीन प्रूव राइट मीन वट एपन्ड इन ए रेजिडेंशियल प्लेस और वी कैन से इन ए एडवाइनिंग द क्लिनिक ऑफ ए डॉक्टर ए ब्रिक ग्राइंडिंग मशीन हैव बीन इंस्टॉल्ड राइट एंड इट कोस्ट सो मच जस्ट एंड इट एंटर इन टू द प्लेटिव चैम्बर बिकॉज ऑफ दैट इट कोज फिजिकल इनकनवीनियंस टू हिम एंड इज द पेशेंट्स राइट इट इट वॉज ए केस ऑफ पब्लिक नोशंस एंड स्पेशल डैमेज टू द प्लेटिव हैज बीन प्रूव सिमिलरली इन कैम्बल वर्सेज Pentington Corporation, nineteen hundred eleven. It was given that an uninterrupted view of the funeral process of King Edward VIII could be had from the window of the plaintiff building. The plaintiff accepted certain payments from certain persons and permitted them to occupy seats in her building before the date of the said procession. The defendant corporation constructed a stand on the highway in front of the plaintiff building, which obstructed the view. Held that plaintiff was entitled to compensation. Right? क्या हुआ इस केस के अंदर? Plaintiff की एक building थी, ठीक है? Plaintiff की building के सामने से एक procession जाना था किसका? Funeral procession of the King Edward VIII. Right? जिसको plaintiff की building से देखा जा सकता था. Okay? प्लेंटिव ने क्या किया प्लेंटिव ने कुछ अपनी बिल्डिंग में कुछ सीट सेल कर दी सो दैट पीपल विल पे टू द प्लेंटिव एंड दे विल वॉच दैट फिंडल प्रोसेशन ऑफ एडवर्ड एट राइट प्रोसेशन होने से पहले डिफेंडेंट uh, के कॉरपोरेशन ने एक स्टैंड बना दिया हाईवे के ऊपर इन फ्रंट ऑफ द प्लेंटिव बिल्डिंग ओके एंड बिकॉज ऑफ दैट नाउ दो पर्सन आर नॉट एबल टू सी द व्यू ऑफ दैट फिंडल प्रोसेशन Right in that case, it was held that plaintiff was entitled to compensation because they obstructed the view of the plaintiff uh, persons to view that. Right, so that obstructed and plaintiff was entitled for compensation that was held in Campbell versus Pettington Corporation, 1911. Right. So all these are the examples of public nuisance. Next, we have the case of the private nuisance, or it is set, taken as a tort of nuisance, right? When we talk about the private nuisance, the private nuisance generally interferes with the rights of a private person, rights of an individual person, not with the whole community as a large, right? In order to prove the case of the private nuisance, uh, the three essential things have to be shown. The first one is unreasonable interference. The first thing is that unreasonable interference, right? What do you mean by that unreasonable interference? It is damage to the plaintiff property or may cause personal discomfort to him in enjoyment of the property. Right? Means any act of the defendant that cause damage to the plaintiff property or it may be in such a way that it is interference of the personal discomfort of the enjoyment of the property that is a taken as private nuisance. That the first essential of that. Here we cannot say that every interference is a nuisance, right? Uh, just thus, if I say that a person having a house by the roadside must put up with such inconvenience, which is incidental to the traffic. मतलब आपका घर एक road side पर है, road के ऊपर है. अब traffic से शोर आता है आपके घर में, और आप ये कहो कि मेरा घर road side से traffic से शोर आता है, इससे public, इससे private uh, nuisance. Hence, all the uh, all the travellers are liable to pay compensation to me. That you cannot say, right? That you cannot say because every type of nuisance cannot be taken as a private. Every interference cannot be taken as a private nuisance. Okay. In a famous case, Radhe Sham versus Gur Prasad, 1978. What happened in that case? Running of a flour mill on the roadside held to be causing a nuisance because a commercial activity is there in the residential area, right? So that is a sort of nuisance. Similarly, in a case of Sadle versus O Kalem Gam 1940. It was held that for the nuisance, one step for the nuisance, whether it's a nuisance or not, 
there is a test of reasonable test of reasonableness right in that case it all observed that what should be actually the test of test of reasonableness it is observed that test of reasonableness is according to the ordinary mankind living in the society but not to a special case okay an act which is otherwise uh, an act which is otherwise reasonable does not become unreasonable and actionable due to the sensitiveness of the plaintiff if a certain kind of traffic is no nuisance for a healthy person it will not entitle a sick man to bring an action if he suffers there even though the damage is substantial right means what is being mentioned here in this case uh, generally for checking whether it's a nuisance or not we take test of reasonableness right what does it mean that it simply means that a ordinary mankind is suffered from that nuisance so we can say that is taken as a nuisance for example aapke ghar ke andar ek sick person hai theek hai bahar traffic ja raha hai traffic ki sound ek din bahut zyada aati hai aur us karan us sick person ko kuch na kuch problem rehti hai to that sick person cannot go for compensation the reason is healthy person agar wahan par rehte hain to unhe usse koi effect nahi padta right तो एक स्पेशल केस के अंदर स्पेशल सेंसिटिविटी ऑफ द सिक पर्सन विल नॉट मेक इट एक्सनेबल ड्यू टू द सेंसिटिवनेस ऑफ द प्लेंटिव हेंस इट इज ऑब्जर्व दैट द टेस्ट ऑफ रीजनेबलनेस इज अकॉर्डिंगली टू ए ऑर्डनरी मैन काइंड लिविंग इन द सोसाइटी नॉट फॉर एनी एक्सेप्शन नेक्स्ट वी हैव इंटरफेरेंस विद द यूज or enjoyment of the land we have two type of interference first one is unreasonable interference and the second one is interference with the use of enjoyment of land right interference may cause either injury to the property itself or cause discomfort or health of the occupants of the certain property that type of interference causes the nuisance right for example let us say few examples here hanging of the branches of a tree on the land of another person it's my house and the tree is in the neighbor's territory and all the branches hanging in my house right so that is a nuisance that is basically a nuisance escape of the root of a tree it's my house right in the territory of my neighbor there is a tree and the roots have been escaped and because of that the wall has been damaged right so that is sort of a nuisance escape of water gas smoke and fume vibrations on another property suppose it's my house right my neighbor house has a vibrating machine or we can say he started with a floor mill and because of vibration is caused and because of that vibration uh, my house vibrates right and there is a damage to my house right in that case that is said to be a case of nuisance right so all these are the examples of the nuisance right what we can say that anything is said to be a nuisance which which creates an injury to the property right or it's an injury uh, to discomfort or health of the occupants of that property is interference with the use of enjoyment of the land right so all these are the examples of nuisance here we have a case that is said to be novel versus harrison it's a case of novel versus harrison what is observed in that case that it was held that if branches of a tree are hanging on the highway it's not a public nuisance If the branches of the tree are hanging on the highway, it's not a public nuisance or it's not a nuisance. The reason behind it that because that are not on the private land, because that are not on the private land, if the same have to be on the private land, then it may be a nuisance, right? Uh, for example, if uh, the branches are on the hanging on the highway, and because of that branches, the defendant neither knew or could have known that branches would fall and would break and fall. so that is not said to be a nuisance in the case of novel versus harrison in the year of 1926 next we have in the nuisance there should be substantial interference with the comfort and convenience not a single no not a single case or not a traf, not a trifling or fanciful inconvenience is not enough right there should be some substantial problem that there, there should be some substantial interference with the right okay uh, for example in a case of ball versus ray what happened disturbances because of the noises of horses in the building converted into the stable is a nuisance there was a building right earlier here people stay 
but now that building has been converted into a stable and that horses are there and horses create noises and because of the noises all the public living in the neighboring house are suffering or we can say uh, the noises are interfering in the uh, enjoyment of the house right hence we can say that is said to be nuisance similarly in the case of Bellamy versus Wells there was a club and what happened the club has gathered a noisy uh, club has gathered a noisy crowd uh, at till 3 am right it's a nuisance to all the persons who are living adjoining to the club right that is sort of a nuisance similarly in the case of robinson versus kilbert tort of nuisance cannot be applicable for exceptionally delicate trade right means there should be general duty not to interfere uh, right uh, still uh, for example in that case what happened two adjoining houses are there right uh, one day that fires right and smoke entered into the house of the other right because of any negligence or because of any act now in that house the person lives they were engaged in a profession in which smoke causes a lot of smoke is a lot of danger for them right so we cannot say that in generally there may be a chance that smoke may uh, move and it comes to the other house for a single incident right so that is not for exceptionally delicate trade right we are taking that case only for an ordinary business not for exceptionally delicate trade cannot complain if an injury is caused by the neighbor doing something lawful on his property right so all these are the examples in which the nuisance have been there but in the robinson versus kilbert similarly we have taken uh, earlier one more example that is said to be Sedley versus O Callum game where it was stated that a uh, test of the reasonableness would be from ordinary usage of mankind living in the society but not for a specific delicate person right next term that is what are the damages in nuisance okay when we talk about the damages in nuisance uh, the damages that are caused in nuisance, actual damages is required to be proved in court of law. For claiming the compensation, we have to prove the actual damage. We cannot say the damages are fanciful because earlier I told you that whatever the damages are there, uh, there should be some substantial interference with the discomfort and there should be some substantial damage, right? It must be actual damage. In case of the public nuisance, the plaintiff can bring an action in the tort only when he proves a special damage to him. Right. Although damage is one of the essential, the law will often presume it. In, in, in private nuisance also, the damage is essential. But in case of public nuisance, actual damage have to be proved. Actual damage have to be proved in court of law in order to get compensation. Right. So that is about the nuisance. So till time what we have understood we have understood about private nuisance right as well as we have understood public nuisance what are required in case of the public nuisance at all what are required in case of the private nuisance now we try to understand what are the defenses available in case of the nuisance right the first defense is available that is the prescription it means a right to do an act which would otherwise be a private nuisance may be acquired by prescription right for example a right to commit a private nuisance may be acquired as an easement if the same has been peacefully and openly enjoyed as an easement and right for a period of 20 years. Right for a period of 20 years means from long time if that has been done. So that would be taken as a case of easement, right? So that would be taken as a defense for nuisance. For example, two houses are there. One house has a floor mill. One house has a floor mill. And because of that floor mill, uh, there causes a noise as well as vibration. There it causes a noise as well as vibrations. And that floor mill was running for 22 years. At least 20 years, that floor mill was running. No one has ever complained. But now, after 20 years, one person has complained of the neighbor about this floor uh, about this floor, floor mill, and uh, goes for compensation. Now it is stated that because that floor mill was there since last 20 years and no one has uh, made any complaint, so that would be an easement of that. It's an easement because the people have already accepted it, 
right or in general sense we can say they have ratified it right so that in the case that would be taken as a defense right similarly a statutory authority an act done under the statutory authority is also taken as a complete defense for nuisance right so these are taken as a defense but they have to be proved in the court of law right and if the judiciary is justified with these defenses only that will prevail in the court of law there are certain defenses are there which could be taken as a defense but generally they are ineffectual defenses to nuisance right let us take it one by one first one is nuisance due to the act of others sometime act of two or more persons acting independently of each other may constitute a nuisance although the act of any one of them alone would not be so right for example we have four houses here out of the four the three houses are commercial right and they involved in may have the, they have the floor mills if a floor mill of an individual house is not so much causing noise but when all the three floor mills works at the same time then the noise is so that that is intolerable then the noise is such that that is intolerable so that is not a taken as defense to the nuisance the that floor mill owner cannot say that only my single floor mill uh, noise is not enough to create nuisance when all three uh, floor mill working together in that case that there would be a very uh, loudy voice right so hence it would be not taken as a defense similarly public good it is not defense to say that what is nuisance to a particular plaintiff is beneficial to the public in general right uh, otherwise the public utility undertaking could be held liable to unlawful interference with the rights of individual so one person cannot say that uh, because i have made this because of the public good so that's not a nuisance that's not a defense for that next one is the reasonable click care you cannot say that because i have taken all the uh, reasonable care hence i can take it as a defense that could not be taken as a defense next is plaintiff coming to the nuisance it's not a defense that plaintiff himself came to the place of the nuisance a person cannot be expected to refrain from buying a land on which nuisance already exists right so all these are the defenses which may be which are taken by generally by the defendants but they are not taken as a defenses they are in in effectual defenses in case of the nuisance next we have abatement of the nuisance right what do you mean by the term abatement abatement means to lessen to decrease abate means to lessen or we can say to decrease right here we are talking about the concept of abatement of the nuisance if something interferes in your house now whether you have a right to abate it or not that's a basic thing means uh, it's my house right and there was a tree of the neighbor house and the branches of the tree entered in my house now question here is whether i can cut the branches of the tree or not question here is abatement of the nuisance kya aap us nuisance ke cause ko kya jo nuisance aapke sath hui hai kya aap individual action le sakte hain ya nahi le sakte ye hamara topic hai right just try to understand occupier of a land is permitted to obey occupier of a land is permitted to obtain abate right to terminate by his own act which is affecting his land for example if there is a tree and branches are hanging in my house so i may cut those portion of the branches that are entering in my house right generally it is expected from you before applying that abatement a notice to the other party is required unless the nuisance constitutes a danger to the life of property bhi abhi ye mere ghar ke andar branches aa rahi hai iska ye matlab to nahi hai ki mere pe is pe kya ho gaya there is a danger to my house right तो काटने से पहले आपसे एक्सपेक्टेड है कि पहले आप दूसरे ओनर को नोटिस दीजिए नोटिस देने के बाद में इफ इट नॉट टेक केयर ऑफ दैट देन यू मे कट इट राइट बट इट इज रिक्वायर्ड फ्रॉम यू टू गिव एटलीस्ट ए नोटिस टू द अदर पर्सन बिफोर द प्रोसेस ऑफ अबेटमेंट राइट व्हेन अबेटमेंट इज पॉसिबल विदाउट गोइंग टू रॉन्ग डूअर्स लैंड द सेम मे बी डन विदाउट नोटिस अगर ये उसकी लैंड में जाए बिना हो सकता है तो आप कर सकते हैं ठीक है जैसे ब्रांचेज मेरे यहां पर आ रही है तो इन ब्रांचेस को कट करने के लिए मुझे उसकी लैंड में जाने की जरूरत नहीं है राइट तो दैट अबेटमेंट कैन बी देयर विदाउट एनी नोटिस बट सपोज आई हैव माय हाउस एंड देयर इज अ ट्री हियर द रूट्स ऑफ द ट्री आर एंटरिंग इन माय हाउस राइट एंड बिकॉज ऑफ दैट दैट वॉल इज गेटिंग ए लॉस देयर इज अ थ्रेट टू दिस वॉल राइट नाउ 
without giving notice if i go in his man's land and cut the tree right for that the notice is required in general it is a remedy which is not favored by the law although it is a remedy to cut the cause right but it is not generally favored by the law because it may lead to the breach of the peace means that will become a cause of fight between the two neighbors right the party abetting the nuisance must be carefully not to interfere with the property of the wrongdoer generally it is expected that if such kind of nuisance is there the party has to go to the, uh, the the there must be notice to the party and after that action have to be taken or otherwise or otherwise it should be with the help of the court that thing can be done a private individual cannot abate a public nuisance unless it causes some special or peculiar harm to him means a private nuisance can be terminated with the help of the abatement right but public nuisance when there is a public nuisance when there is a public nuisance to a private person private person cannot abate a public nuisance unless it causes some special danger to him if because of that nuisance if special danger to that particular person in that case he may abate that public nuisance otherwise it's not expected from the private person to go for, to abating the public nuisance right so that are the examples of the abatement of the nuisance i hope you have understood the concept of the nuisance now so what we understood in the whole session we understood what do you mean by the nuisance interference in the environment of the property right uh, then we have understood the uh, private nuisance as well as the public nuisance what are the defenses available to the defendant what defenses could not be taken as an appropriate and last we have understood the remedies available in case of the nuisance that is abatement of the nuisance which generally means lessening the cause of the nuisance right so this is end to our session of the topic of nuisance i hope you enjoyed the session that already i have i discussed earlier i hope you enjoyed the session thank you very much you may send your feedback to me at my email id legalbuddy at the rate gmail dot com or my whatsapp number zero nine two one double five one double four three five i expect from you to share my videos on your facebook wall as well as with your friends so that they will also be benefited by this thank you very much